What's going on there, folks? Good evening, Earthmaster here. Checking in kind of late on the Earthquake Live 3D stream. I know I put out quite a few videos today. Been pretty active uh, throughout the globe today. It is May 21st, 2021. It's a date, 9.25 p.m. West Coast time here in California. And uh, latest quake out here on the globe, a 2.5 up here in Alaska. Rather deep as well. You can see that uh, ring raised off of the globe up here white circle ring indicating that uh, deep earthquake up there in the Alaska area Pacific Plate subduction zone. Uh, check out the North American continent uh, and down through South America. There is a major absent absence of earthquake activity and that's all because of a forward movement over here to the west. Man talk about a very very active day oh my gosh uh, some major quakes taking place out here in China. Uh, in certain areas of China, different areas of China, and also down here around the Fiji Islands area. Let's go ahead and check out this latest information here from the USGS folks, uh, showing that uh, major movement of the Pacific Plate pressurized over here to the west here. You can see it all makes perfect sense, folks. If you look at this from a, uh, a major view, like say if you're looking at this from outer space or, or uh, just from this map in general, okay? This, this world is big to us. It's really big, but it's small in the terms of plate dynamics, plate tectonics, okay? Pacific Plate is a huge player in producing major quakes here to the west, okay? North American Plate, a major player in producing uh, major earthquakes here along this plate boundary, okay? We've looked at some absence of earthquake activity up here in, in the Japan area for quite some time. 6.8 did not do it. I believe these guys are still on target for the uh, next big earthquake up here in this region but due to the lack of um the lack of uh what's the word i'm looking for here the lack of slippage i guess if you will in this region we're looking at a locked area and this this area is it's going to be next folks i guarantee you it's going to be next japan's looking at some something significant coming pretty soon so this area is locked, even though we're seeing a couple small fours and whatnot, this area is moving the pressure over here to the west. And this dynamic of plate boundaries here is just squeezing activity, squeezing the pressure over here. And that's why we've seen this activity in Japan today, not only in the south, but also in the north. Okay, the south boundary, the south part of the plate dynamics here, kind of ru runs up against this uh, edge, if you will, this, this plate this plate dynamic section right here okay so we stopped movement to the west kind of stopped right here right we've seen all this activity this was a 6.1 uh, let's let's go ahead and run this through real quick there was a 4.6 5.3 any 6.1 followed up by many aftershocks okay a short time later due to the dynamics out here of this plate boundary here we did not see significant movement down further west here over at India Bay of uh, Bengal area. Uh, so this area is pretty locked and loaded as well when it comes to seismic activity. So we're looking up here to the west. The pressure increases in this area. And this, check out this section. Look how far we are away from this, this earlier activity during the day. We're talking about uh, two, four, 500, 500 miles maybe, maybe a little bit more between this major activity in the south to this great, pretty good sized earthquake up here to the north. The 7.3, 7 uh, 7 I believe originally a 7.4. It was bouncing around a lot. Uh, it took USGS a, a long time, a long time, over 20 minutes to issue a preliminary earthquake data uh, magnitude for this earthquake. That's pretty, uh, it's, that's bad. It's really bad considering that they have the uh, dynamics and the, the information to put out earth, preliminary earth, earthquake data. Whether it's, say, say it uh, uh, came up as a 7.8, okay? Put it out there. At least let the folks know that there was a major earthquake taking place out here in this part of China. But it took them 20, 25 minutes or longer to issue the earthquake uh magnitude any kind of data uh, on this quake that struck up there okay emsc had this at a 6.8 6.9 
USGS 7.4 originally uh, and then got downgraded to a 7.3 okay check out the fracture zone out there we're talking about over 50 miles or so of this rupture 7.3 the main quake since then there's been quite a few fours folks quite a few fives and I'm sure much much more much much more magnitudes uh, below that threshold of the 4.5 uh, 4 that uh, USGS is holding here. We're looking at a little bit of earthquake activity outside of this main fracture area, a ways away, probably about 100 miles away to the east. 4.7 taking place up here. So this kind of tells me that still uh, we're looking at seismically increase in pressure up here. China has been a major player when it comes to some good sized earthquakes, folks. I'm talking good sized earthquakes. Let's check out recent history since about, oh, 1900 or so. 1900 or so. That's about as far back as the USGS record catalog goes back. Okay, and there's been some, <laughs> there's been some more earthquakes aside from these, okay? And this is just in a little rectangle I drew here on the map. There's earthquakes obviously outside of this region, but I kind of wanted to zoom in here. There is the 7.3 that struck today, May 21st, 2021. Check out some of these magnitudes that happen within the vicinity, okay? There's been 7.8, very close to the 7.3 today. Uh, back in 1937, 6.7, 6.6, quite a few sixes up here. What's going on over here to the east, northeast, kind of where that earthquake activity is kind of showing up tonight, a little bit further to the east. There was an 8.3. That's a mega quake, folks. That's a major, major earthquake activity. I couldn't even imagine 8.3 out there. 1920 is when that took place. And that's not the only 8.3. There's been other significant sized earthquakes taking place within this region. 7.9, 2008, a little bit further to the southeast. And some more sizable magnitudes out here. Lots of sevens, lots of sixes. We can uh, we can look at this map all day and see that there was some significant earthquakes out here over time. And this is a major player when it comes to some significant movement. I know there's another 8.0 that was way further south. 8.6, goodness, 8.6, woo, back in 1950. I think a lot of folks remember that Tibet uh, earthquake back then in that little bend, that little bend area. This is it might be an area we want to watch, folks, because we did not see any further movement to the west here following this 6.1 uh, magnitude quake in China earlier today. We would expect, due to the dynamics here, for some flow or pressure to be increasing in this area and to see and to expect some earthquake activity in this region, but we didn't. We've seen it well up north. So watch this area very closely, folks. 1950 has been, uh, it's not recent. Trust me, 1950 is not recent. So this area to the west of where we've seen this earthquake activity today um, is very seismically active in the past. And we are talking about some major magnitudes out there, including that 8.6. So this ain't nothing to joke around with. This is the China area, uh, regions of the Himalayas, all this area around Nepal. This whole plate boundary is very capable of producing some significant size earthquakes. So be on guard, folks. We're watching this very closely. Nothing further to the west. Look at this. Look at this absent zone through here. India, through Nepal, Afghanistan, all pretty quiet over the last 24 hours. Um, aside from that, aside from that significant earthquake activity up there in China, man, shortly thereafter, we've seen some major movement down here in the Fiji Islands area. Uh, pretty shallow earthquake activity. I would expect some deeper movement down here because this is a major player when it comes to deep earthquake activity. But we've seen a shallow, good size, 6.5 magnitude quake there. Since then, there's only been a couple small aftershocks, relatively deep, not super deep, about 85 kilometers here, and uh, 63 up here to the west, northwest. 
Uh, so we're still kind of watching this region all throughout this area. Should be on alert, folks. Uh, especially, especially up here in this region. Uh, like I said, the dynamics of the plate flow. Okay, and we, we talk about arrows. We talked about plate general movement. It, it all kind of moves in this direction here, folks. We kind of moved from the east to the west, and that's kind of what we're looking at. Um, I'm a little concerned with this area due to the lack of um, some earthquake activity in this region. Do, I mean, we're talking about some major earthquakes here. We have not seen any further movement here, but I expect that pretty soon, really soon. Um, over here in the North American continent, kind of quiet up here to the north, folks, but we did see a little, boom, uh, little bit of movement here near El Salvador, Nicaragua region, 5.5. Uh, a little bit of further, deeper movement, and here into the Middle American Trench area, subduction zone. This area here is very capable of producing some mega quakes here, so, um, you know, it's, who knows? An hour from now, we could see an 8.1, who knows what? And we could call these uh, four shocks, but we just don't know um, if this place is, if this area is ready to release pressure or not. But we are looking at seismically uh, active uptick in this region. South America, very, very quiet, only a 4.2 into the subduction zone of the Peru Chile Trench inland at 105 kilometers down dip downstream underneath the Andes there. North American continents, go ahead and zoom in here real quick. Not a whole lot to report, folks. A little bit of movement here we talked about here up along the Appalachian, uh, Appalachian I Islands. What? The Appalachian Mountains um, and some movement down here in Texas as well. We'd have to go into the micro uh, microquake scale once again to see anything. And even then, folks, it's very minimal. Uh, looking at this map here, it's very, very quiet in Southern California. Only a handful of quakes down here in a very uh, seismically hazard area, as this major plate boundary is. Just very quiet. But we we see times of quietness whenever we're looking at a major force of pressure heading to the west here. And that's kind of what we're looking at. We're looking at, the, the, I think, if we hadn't seen this earthquake activity today, we would still be looking at some significant movement. Maybe not significant, but... Uh, some increase in earthquake activity along the west coast here, but we're looking at some quiet spells for now for now uh, Due to the release of pressure over here to the west. Okay, and you may not think that well This earthquake activity is thousands of miles away from the Pacific plate But if you think about the pressure and the and the buildup of pressure that this Pacific plate adds into this area over days and over weeks over years just a little bit of release of pressure on this plate over here around China could ease up a little bit of pressure here in the Japan area or along the Pacific plate boundary of the north of this uh, Pacific Ring of Fire, which ultimately can, and, and realistically looking at, speaking, uh, release pressure over here along the North American plate. So it's a giant cracked egg, folks. The world is huge. It's big. If you were to walk this world, you would be... Oh my gosh, there's no way that you can say anything like that because it, it just it's not possible. But the dynamics of plate tectonics here are simple. They're simplified and they're drawn out for a reason. Yes, there are many, 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 many other faults and systems that build up mountains, that create valleys, uh, that create little fractures in the earth. But the whole plates as themselves tell a simple story of the dynamics of, of movement, if you will. And that, that's, that's been over here to the west, folks. This arrow, and we talked about this arrow. We're looking at the dynamics of um, an arrow generating pressure into this region right here, right along this dotted line, so to speak. And that's what we talked about last night. And sure enough, today we're looking at that activity. But what, you know, uh, as I mentioned, I'm going to mention it one more time. Watch this area pretty closely, okay? Uh, Yellowstone National Park, pretty quiet, folks. Release out there along the North American continent is pretty obvious, uh, which relieves pressure out here in the uh, the Intermountain West region. Nothing. Zip zero to report. And that also includes the trimmer, folks. Check out the trimmer map. Let's go ahead and check this out real quick. Zero. 
And it's been like that for a couple days. We've looked at a decrease in pressure out here along the west coast. Far as the subduction of the Juan de Fuca plate underneath the North American plate. It's quiet. It's been quiet for the past couple days. And it all paints a picture because of the activity over here to the west. It's quiet. Look, at, Check it out, folks. I mean, I don't need to draw any arrows on here, any color crayons or anything to simplify it. It's there. Uh, movement, obviously, is, it's, it's working its way over here. It's, it's a wave, so to speak. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to get into, into some crazy stuff, you know, start talking about uh, vibrations and vibrational frequencies and uh, whatnot, what they can do. Um, but the planet, man, I tell you what, this Earth was ringing like a bell today. Ringing like a bell. On all the seismograph stations I was watching, it was pretty crazy. But it, it, what's weird is we don't see it here on Yellowstone National Park. For a 7.3 magnitude quake to strike, I'm not seeing... It's weird. It's it's strange, folks. I'm, I'm going to tell you. I don't see it showing up on these seismograph stations. Maybe just a little bit here. So I'm wondering if they have all these... Uh, the seismographs in Yellowstone National Park cranked up. Far as, not cranked up, but toned down, so to speak. Far as not being uh, seismically adjusted to pick up movement. It's so squashed that it would take significant movement to show up here on these seismographs. Because I've seen in the past, man, when we have a 7.3, that baby will pop up like, like a big quake. And I'm just not seeing it. I mean, look at Holmes Hill. You couldn't even tell that there was a 7.3 earthquake today anywhere on the globe. So I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that. It's a little on the suspicious side because I've seen big earthquakes cause a significant signature on here, and we're just not looking at it today. Something's going on there with the adjustments of the seismic uh, monitors there. All right, folks, um, I'm jumping out of here. We're watching earthquake activity ramping up here into uh, into this region, 4.2, 105, uh, 155 kilometers down dip downstream of that subduction area there. Pay close attention. It's very possible we could see an uptick in earthquake activity if things stall out over here, unless we see further movement here to the west. Uh, it's, it has provided a little bit of relief, I'm sure, over here to the east. But, uh, man, just, oh, I tell you what, it's just, it's, it's been a crazy day, folks. Um, I'm not for sure how many people are going to get this update video because of the amount of videos I put out today. Uh, I put out three this morning and a couple last night, and YouTube will only, uh, put out three notifications of videos within a 24 hour period and that doesn't include midnight to midnight it's within the last uh within the last time i published a video so uh, make sure you share this video get the word out uh post it on whatever you know social media site to use and uh, just kind of share this video in some groups and whatnot uh, i think we're looking at uh, uh possible some further significant movement out here folks on this planet so stay tuned and uh we'll keep you guys updated here on this channel make sure you subscribe if you are not a subscriber uh, as i've said in the past about 66 percent of my viewers in in total are are non-subscribers so i'd like to uh, i'd like to see that number improve a little bit so make sure you subscribe folks while you're here have a good night. We will chat to you a little bit later. Stay safe out there.